What is up, fellas? Hopefully all is well. It's been a while. It's kind of at this point, since I'm busy um, and kind of been just dealing with a lot of work, my apologies on just not bringing my effort towards commentating on top of stuff. Because honestly, I have probably about 20 videos worth of shit. Mind you, a lot of it is Madden NFL 2004. I'm, you know, for me, it's just I'm not nearly as good in Madden NFL 2004 as the other games. It's just how the game is made, but it just seems more fun that way at the moment. Just not, you know, it, I, I haven't won a Super Bowl on something like that. And to me, uh, I've selfishly put more videos out on that game. Um, NCAA, of course, we're trying to push B.J. Simmons. It is his senior season, so we're going to push him towards Madden NFL 08. This is technically right here. I mean, this is Madden NFL 08 itself. This is the Super Bowl against Vince Young, Reggie Bush, amongst the stars on this Cowboys team. We're hoping they don't play like the Cowboys, uh, just like the Cowboys played this past week against it, what is really uh, apparently uh, everybody else. You know, that's the NFL for you, right? It's a week by week basis, and when you think the Eagles are pretty good, the turns out they just get ball stomped. So it looks like Dallas, uh, their defense is better than people think, that uh, or it's co uh, coach better. Than people think um, but right here this is Super Bowl Sunday Vince Young and the boys against Rex Grossman and this very 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 solid Miami team number one defense overall but it has been the offense with Willis McGahee turning into a dual threat running back out of the backfield for this team we know he know uh, we know what he can do on the ground but uh, this man just gets so much done now through the air we saw it against Jacksonville in the divisional play uh divisional round the dude's a beast and then speaking of just this offensive line is pretty solid overall but taking a look uh back at uh the nfl um the past week we saw uh well obviously just looking at monday night but thursday night football i believe fuck who even played thursday night let's take a gander nfl week three Go. Thursday night football. Oh, no, it wasn't the Jets and Broncos, even though that was very hard to watch. I mean, that was very... Yeah, it was Panthers and Texans. Panthers looking like a good overall team. Um, and honestly, they need to get Robbie Anderson more involved because now you're going to have to deal with uh, one of the best players in all of football, Christian McCaffrey. Is going to be out in a hamstring issue. You know, that's why people were nervous about Austin Eckler headed into the season. Turns out that was just a bunch of noise. But once you hear that hamstring issue, especially for uh, skilled players such as C-Mac, turns into a huge issue because it can either last a couple weeks and it's done with. Nice touchdown catch right there by Sidney Rice. Speaking of star players, a stud at wide receiver. But... Panthers win easily in this one. Their defense is really showing well, but they lose J.C. Horn to a broken foot. Then they lose C-Mac to a hamstring injury, which could last up to eight weeks. You never know. Could It could bother him the rest of the season where he's not 100%. But a nice win right there. Sam Darnold's proving to be a beautiful trade that they made for just a third-round pick when you see the likes of Trey Lance getting drafted by the San Francisco 49ers in which just future first-round picks... And uh, also, speaking of, it looks more and more likely that, you know, we got the Miami Dolphins right here. Man, I thought that was going to be a good play. In real life, uh, pretty much uh, we're seeing a huge thing going on to where two is injured, but it just didn't seem like the uh, confidence is in Tua to begin with. Those rumors come out about Deshaun Watson. Um, and it turns out, hey, Ironically enough, that if Deshaun Watson gets traded to the Miami Dolphins and they somehow win a Super Bowl eventually, does that mean that Deshaun Watson finally gets the happy ending that he was going for? I'm here for the jokes. I hope y'all are too. But let's be honest, that would be one hell of an ironic happy ending right there for Deshaun, John, uh, Deshaun Watson. But uh, they just don't look all too good. They oh, God, that could have been a touchdown right there by Dante Hall. But wait, it is what it is. But um, really, though, uh, it just seems um, Dolphins, they, you know, hell of an effort against a Raiders team that's now 3-0, and performing all well. Derek Carr is highly underrated. I know they beat the Steelers, and the Steelers look like shit. 
And but the Ravens was a solid win. This is obviously a solid win. Beautiful, solid broken tackle right there. But hey, a foot fracture out for the season. Hell, if he was out for one week, it's technically out for the rest of the season. But I digress. Cardinals still looking like one hell of an offense in this league. They always had a solid offense, and that's the thing. A lot of people giving shit to Cliff Kingsbury. The man's, I mean, what? They give, they give him shit about, oh, he's an overrated coach, Cliff Kingsbury this, Cliff Kingsbury that. Well, I'm sorry, fellas. Why the fuck did, like, I understand that experience is going to, you know, and repertoire and is going to get you, you know, into the door or keep you into an organization longer. But honestly, does it kind of look like Kyle Shanahan's just, you know, a Cliff Kingsbury that's been in the league longer? I know they're just saying, oh, he shouldn't have been a coach, maybe an OC. Fuck it. I mean, that's what you're dealing with now. Cliff Kingsbury is one hell of an offensive coach. And he doesn't have to be some dude that, like, dealing with, like, the defense and stuff like that. If he's got an offense in mind, let him fucking do his thing. And then it turns out right now that defense is starting to play well for the Cardinals. You know, Chandler Jones is easily one of the top three pass rushers. Him and Miles Garrett kind of seem like the two best pass rushers in all of football. And you need that for that type of team if they're going to be just scoring at least 25, 28 points um, a game that you expect them to at least be in a lead at times, and you're going to need that kind of pass rush if you expect to keep leads in games. And big play to Roy Williams. Texas to Texas right there as they had with Vince Young, but Vince Young was injured on that play. That's easily a fucking face mask. You know? Nope, somehow not. But stop giving Cliff Kingsbury shit when everybody just rides Kyle Shanahan's dick, okay? The only reason why people don't fucking do that shit is two things. Like I said, he's been in the league longer, but also, too, he's Mike Shanahan's kid. So y'all shut the fuck up about Cliff Kingsbury. If you're going to talk shit about Cliff, then I'm going to say that Kyle Shanahan is a glorified Cliff Kingsbury. Both great offensive minds, and I don't think either of them deserve ridicule. But don't give Cliff Kingsbury ridicule when Kyle Shanahan is praised as like a great mind as a head coach. So get off his dick. They're 3-0. Browns, 26-6. I'm surprised the Bears even got points in this game. They only had one net yard. Yes, they passed for 67 yards. Justin Fields did in his debut. But he was also sacked nine times for negative 67 yards. So uh, let that digest of how bad the Chicago Bears offensive line is. But also, too, uh, man. Uh, Mitchell Trubisky might uh, might have been a little bit better than we thought. Uh, no, I'm not going to go there with that, but still. In all honesty, it's just this Browns team, they're made for a game like that. Uh, just They will beat the shit out of bad teams, and uh, it makes perfect sense. What a catch by Bobby Wade right there, and what a pass. Right there. But Bills, they win by 22, even though this game kind of makes you feel as if they won by 42. 43-21, to 21, Josh Allen. I was doing daily fantasy football, and I just looked at Josh Allen saying, I was like, no, right? It's like, there's no way. It's like, he could do really well. And I just X him out of my player pool. And uh, he was the yeah, number one quarterback for the week. Guy had five total touchdowns, no interceptions. He had one rushing touchdown in addition to his four passing touchdowns. And speaking of passing touchdowns, it's going to be Isaac Bruce. No, it's not. Ha, huh, fuck you. But nice play right there. Clock is running down. Timeout. I don't know why you just... Don't call it timeout anyways, right away. But a uh, big win by the Bills. Big win by the Browns, but really more so big win by the Bills. I think you lose to Pittsburgh. It is what it is. Maybe, you know, Pittsburgh was at full health on defense. It's just a hard-fought game. Both of those teams not going to be able to score 20 points in that game. Just very defensive. Felt like a playoff game, like in the early, mid-2000s uh, for those two type of teams. Just like very low scoring and stuff like that. Titans beat the Colts. Again, the Colts, what? Colts 0-3 now. I believe the Colts are 0-3. And again, just the Colts look horribly boring. They don't look good on offense at all whatsoever. Jonathan Taylor is not get, uh, getting his production in. And then, honestly, that's testament to the fact that, you know, they lose Costanzo, who ends up retiring, and he's one of the better tackles in all of football. I know Quentin Nelson is still there. as one of the best offensive linemen in all of football at guard. But still, I mean, they're just not getting that. Uh, their defense is just pretty much on the field for way too long, and they're just losing their stride of what they're used to. It's a shame, but it is 
what it is for the Colts. And, uh, yeah, 0-3. And uh, interesting stat. First time they've been 0-3 in 10 years. So it tells you a lot right there. Saints and Patriots. Saints won by 15. They could have pretty much had, like, they just did to the Patriots what the, they did to the Packers in week one. Defense shows up, just making all sorts of pressure for Mac Jones. Mac Jones pretty much forced to throw 40, 50 times in that game, and that's just not how he's built. It's not how this team is right now, and uh, it's the perfect way to attack him. Saints end up winning that one. Kamara with a solid game overall, and it's a nice win for the Saints. 28-13. Falcons end up coming back and beating the Giants in what people are thinking is a very like shootout-type game. I don't even think their offense is good enough, or like their play calling is not even good enough to me for the Falcons to even get in shootouts anymore, it seems. It seems they're either going to give up a lot of points, and maybe you get lucky the one week um, that some of their players just really, really go off. Calvin Ridley is in a, was in a big position for him to be able to step up with eating up a bunch of targets. I mean, he was already getting great amount of targets with Julio still there, but now with Julio out... You're thinking that Kyle Pitts, again, people forget that, uh, you know, first-year tight ends don't uh, really translate all too well immediately. You know, it's Hawkinson starting to get stride. Mark Andrews took a couple seasons to get well. Travis Kelsey wasn't really a big name until, like, what, a year or two in with Alex Smith even. So, um, again, just the expectations are weird. But also, too, to play devil's advocate, Kyle Pitts could also – find himself um, in the slot and stuff like that to just run routes. I mean, the dude's insanely athletic, but they're just not getting him. And uh, I just think the Falcons are absolutely dog shit and whatnot. Uh, it's bad. And speaking of bad, the Pittsburgh Steelers, Big Ben, just looks like you just need to take him out back and kill old Yeller. He looks like shit. And he was just making dumb decisions. It's weird. It's as, if he, like, it's as if he was like getting old in his head, too. And you forget he's like 40 years old. So what, what's the deal here, Big Ben? You shouldn't be thinking that badly at this point. Maybe your body's in shit shape, but I, you shouldn't be making throws like that. And uh, speaking of, that should have been completed on that one, but it is what it is. Bengals, again, it's like now officially just like the Steelers are probably the worst team in their division. And it's a shame because they have one of the best defenses in all of football. And now with the injuries, it kind of seems like uh, the Steelers – are the equivalent of last year's 49ers? Are we going to see that to where it's a very, very good defense with, like, Nick Bosa and company? And then Nick Bosa is just like T.J. Watt, and what is T.J. Watt's going to miss a lot of the time considering all this in a team that, you know, had a very good record the previous season, ends up getting injured and just having those injuries. And maybe the Steelers end up with the top pick or something like that and get, like, a good quarterback to replace Big Ben because, if you ask me, Maybe they can also make some trades and build upon, if they don't like the quarterback, some offensive linemen because they don't look good. Ravens with Justin Tucker's 66-yard field goal reminded me as an Aggie watching Justin Tucker beat A&M in their last showdown game in the Big 12 as they he ends up outlasting A&M and Randy Bullock because Justin Tucker is probably the best kicker of all time when it comes to just his stats, you know, or at least his field goal percentage and whatnot, I think over time he's going to eventually get the most points ever scored. Um, you know, if he plays to like 45 years old like Morton Anderson or whatever the fuck his name was. But uh, Broncos, surprisingly enough, the Bears with nine sacks and only one net yard of passing offense happen to still not be the lowest scoring team in the whole entire slate of games in week three. Just absolute garbage. It, they don't look good at all. We kind of expected it, though. I mean, they don't really get, look at That's the thing. The Houston Texans look like a solid team. Um, and I just mean solid team for what you're expecting. Uh, just get a win against the Jags. They made the Jags really look like the Jags were the worst team in the NFL last year. But the Broncos really stated their case for what is the worst team. And there you go. That's the game-winning Catch right there by Bobby Wade. Well, technically, in order to clinch this game, beautiful Super Bowl win. But Seahawks lose to the Vikings. And that was interesting in itself. I think the Vikings are going to get ball stomped by the Browns. I'll have another video uh, come out on Thursday about that because that just, yeah, that's just not it. That's just not it. That's just not it um, about this. Uh, Thursday Night Football, though, 
I do think that the Bengals are going to beat the Jaguars. Also, to talk about the Rams, I think the Bucking the Rams, a hey, awesome to y'all. Y'all won the game. Y'all, Matt Stafford finally got comfortable. Looked very good in that game. Four touchdown passes, no interceptions at all. Tampa Bay's defense is kind of hung over on defense uh, for sure. I mean, they just signed Richard uh, Sherman. So, we'll just have to see. But uh, I wouldn't be celebrating it as if you just won, you know, your ticket to the Super Bowl. Watch out, fellas. I don't think Tom Brady and them are the team to fuck with. They, again, are the defending champs. As always, fellas, take it easy and see you all next time.